Hello everyone, welcome to Channels, the next flow podcast. I'm Geraldine Vendehora, lead developer advocate at Sikera, and I'm joined today by my fellow advocates, Chris Hackart. Uh, we'll be talking about next flow training. Hi, Chris. Hey, Geraldine. It's, it's nice to be here. It's been a while since I've been on a podcast um, and it's very dear to me. Training is very dear to me rather, um, and it's nice to be back uh, talking about it again. Excellent. Well, yes, uh, one of the things that our, our community team does is develop training materials. Um, they're used for teaching online and in-person uh, trainings. Um, and our team delivers uh, some of these trainings, but the goal really is to empower others in the community to use those materials in their own training as well. So we're going to talk about that today, kind of the history of, of the trainings um, that we've done and how we're, we're planning to evolve things to better serve the needs of the community. So to kick things off, how about we recap the history uh, of um, the trainings and how we got here today. Chris, could you tell us a little bit, since you've been with the team much longer than I have, um, how, how did this all get started? So I, for those that have been following the podcast, we talked about this maybe six months ago, but for anyone that didn't catch the episode, um, I'll take us through everything again. So training's always been really important to NextFlow, to Sakira. Um, and I think it was originally Paolo and Evan that were basically trotting around the globe, teaching people how to use NextFlow. Um, and of course, in the early days of NextFlow and Sakira, um, this was actually quite a big part of, of what they were doing, just getting it out there, making everyone um, aware of, of NextFlow and, and teaching people how to use it. Around two years ago, um, coming up two years ago, when I joined Sakira, um, the training, which was previously based on the DSL1 version of NextFlow, uh, was getting sort of transitioned to DSL2. Um, NextFlow was slowing the support for DSL1, and we made this big shift um, that all the training material would only be for DSL2. Around the same time, the training material that was hosted um, on Sakira um, sort of got put onto this new domain, which was uh, training.nextflow.io. Um, and this kind of this community shift, this material sort of became um, owned by the community. Um, it's always been open source and available for everyone. Um, was a more proactive way of sort of saying, hey, look, this, this material belongs to everyone. Um, if you think something should be in there, if you want to contribute, you can go ahead and make a pull request and do that. Since then, the training material um, has been sort of reshaped and rebranded a little bit in a couple of different ways. Um, it's been renamed from sort of basic to foundational um, or giving you the fundamental skills for learning NextFlow. And at the same time, we've had new training materials sort of um, come along. So we now have an advanced training when we spoke about this last in the podcast, we had Rob Saib join us um, talking about um, some of the material that was involved in that um, and how we feel a little bit uncomfortable about using the word advanced um, because obviously um, intermediate and advanced and foundational, all these words are relative to your experience. Um, so we sort of chatted all about, all about that previously, um, but the point I'm pretty trying to make is that this material is um, out there and available um, and it's all in DSL too. Um, of course, with this training, um, we started with this material rather, we started giving trainings, community trainings um, with this material. We started pushing these out onto YouTube every six months. A part of the reason behind this was because the material is always improving. We have these community contributions, we make edits ourselves, we realize that things could be done better. Um, there might be a new feature of Nexto that we want to demonstrate as a part of the training. So it's always updating. Um, so as a part of that, we have regular trainings, um, and of course, um, because we hold open source very dear to, is very dear to our hearts, uh, we do try to make this available and as accessible for everyone. Um, and as a part of that, we push this out uh, on YouTube and have interactive hours where people can come in um, and ask questions on that as well. So that kind of takes us from the, the initial days of Secure and Nextly kind of right up to where, where we are now. We have this online material, uh, which of course is open and available, and we have semi-regular trainings to help people learn how to use Nextflow. And so that's what you described there. That's the, the community training that's available every six months. Did I catch that right? Yes, so yes, that's right. Uh, that's right. Um, so you can catch these videos on YouTube. Um, if you go onto the NF Core site, I think most of them are hosted on NF Core at the moment because we do have some NF Core content in there as well. Um, we share those online um, and you can go on there at your own pace, um, pause, stop, rewind, um, and, and see that material when it suits you. Yeah, so so you can you can either join 
the trainings when when it's scheduled and then that's when you have the interactive q a right um and then uh but at any point at any time in the year people can just go and watch watch the videos and use use the the materials themselves on the web page um and um and you can just work through it um by yourself how so uh part of the um the training uses uh these gitpod environments right so that you can very easily um work on it by yourself without doing with, without having a lot of setup can you tell us a little bit about um the reasoning behind that absolutely so um, for anyone that isn't aware of gitpod already gitpod is a it's basically a virtual environment that you can generate in your browser um, we have a yaml file as a part of our training um, sort of uh, website on our repository um, we have a nice little button that you can click in the training material and what this will do is open up this virtual environment for you in your browser um, it's very very similar to vs code for anyone that's familiar with that the really cool thing about it is that we can already package in all of the training material all of the the data and the software that is needed um, so it really takes that sort of first step um, away from you so you don't have to worry about installing the software if you've got the right computer getting the data into the right place all of that's already done for you so we can have everyone start at exactly the same place at exactly the same time um, and what i think is quite a, a nice um, user-friendly environment um, so i'm a massive fan of gitpod um, and alternate an alternative to this of course um, is code spaces as well um, which is very very similar um, but just historically, because we did use Gitpod originally, um, that is the, the platform that we are using preferentially at the moment. Yeah, I have to say I've, I've done a lot of, of trainings of various types over the past decade, um, mainly in my previous life with uh, GATK, uh, Genome Analysis Toolkit, if you're not familiar with it. Um, and it's, uh, it's in the beginning, one of the hardest things to, to um, kind of obstacles to get over when starting a training was always getting everybody in the same environment and i have to say that all these kind of containerized environment solutions that have um popped up in the most recent years have been incredibly helpful um for for training purposes um i had not used gitpod before joining sakara but i was very happily <laughs> impressed with it it was like oh this is really nice this makes it so much easier i wish i had had that before but you know that's uh uh, time moves on. Um, so yeah, uh, so that's the community training. It's it's online materials. Um, we also do in person trainings, right? That where where we're we're invited um, by an academic or research institution mainly, um, and one or a few of us uh, travel and um, go uh, teach. Uh, based on on the training materials that we have that we teach in person. Um, I had the pleasure of participating in one last week that was organized in Ghent um, by the Belgian doctoral schools. Um, it was really cool to to be uh, teaching <laughs> for the very first time. It was kind of fun to be doing it in my home country as well. I mean, so how did it go? Did you have any takeaway messages? What did you learn? Um, well, it was it was a little bit terrifying because they had asked me to come and help. Um, so I was I wasn't running the training. I was I was uh, just coming and helping. I was mo mainly teaching on on the Wednesday on the third day of um, the foundational training. Um, it was terrifying because uh, it was the first time teaching Nextflow, and there's there's nothing. And I started using Nextflow um, in October <laughs> when I joined Sakara. So it's been it's been. Um, an interesting experience but i i have to say um well the combination of the uh kind of pre-packaged um uh training materials plus the good pod environments kind of took away all the the traditional technical issues um and all i had to do was like wrap my head around <laughs> you know the actual next flow concepts and topics um it was really interesting i i really enjoyed you know there's there's nothing quite like teaching something to to Force you to really learn it, um, and I, I know I still have a lot to learn in uh, Nextflow. There's so much that you can do with it. Um, there's there's so many subtleties and so many powerful aspects of it. But for for all the the, the key foundational pieces, um, I was really impressed by how you know you can take people who have sometimes 
only minimal backgrounds in, in um, bioinformatics as such. And in, in a few days, get them to the point where uh, they're, uh, you know, reasonably comfortable, um, at least looking at an Exflow pipeline, writing out and understanding how the components fit together. And, and that's how you get started. And it's, it's really cool to see that um, in action. Yeah. And big shout out to the Ghent team because they were wonderful and uh, very helpful uh, answering questions about all the things I didn't know yet. So thank you guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was, uh, that's the kind of thing we do. Um, teaching in-person trainings. Chris, you've, you've done a lot more trainings than I have. Um, what was your most recent teaching experience? Uh, great question. Uh, my most recent teaching experience must have been in Australia last year. So this was a similar situation. Uh, they've been working with uh, TKI um, over in Australia and they invited me over for um, a week just to sort of talk about Nextflow and run some training. Um, that training was a little bit different actually and they were really focusing on um, utilizing the NF Core pipelines and, and they had a lot of fun as well. It was a lot of bespoke sort of teaching, um, sort of, you know, working out what pipelines people were interested in, talking about the different levels of configuration mm. and the options that are available to, you know, really these users of these sort of, you know, community curated and shared pipelines. Um, and that was a lot of fun. And it was nice to talk about the science that people were doing as well, something that we don't get to do as much of um, in these roles, but getting down and, and, you know, understanding their needs and their concerns and their sort of pressure points. Uh, when learning this as well, was really valuable um, something that we don't get as much time to do when we're sort of teaching online in a virtual environment. Um, so being somewhere in person, um, I find it really, really valuable. Yeah, it's 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 really the the, the amount of interaction and quality of interaction. Um, obviously, online teaching is very efficient in terms of use of resources to be, <laughs> you know, um, but but it's the, the in-person teaching has a, a level of interactivity and um, quality of, of interaction that I think is, is really exceptional. Um, I, I really enjoyed it too. You know, you, you talk about configuration. Um, some of the things that I found in, in teaching the topics is um, moving away a little bit from the written materials, um, getting people to think about and discuss um, what kind of things you might want to configure in a pipeline, the different levels of configuration. There's like scientific configuration um, when you want to modify the, the algorithm, the behavior of the tool that you're running within the pipeline. Um, there's there's the plumbing of the pipeline. How do you how do you tweak the, the flow of data through the pipeline if you want to skip some steps or substitute a tool? And then there's things like the, the hardware configuration of, um, can, you know, configuring things to run on your particular hardware and your particular infrastructure, talking about memory and CPU and stuff like that. Um, and I found it really interesting, you know, once once you've covered the basics of like, these are the options, these are configuration files and profiles and things like that, command line options, how do you go beyond that and kind of get people thinking about what that means and how to use these things in practice. I think that's where the the in person instruction can be really nice because you can you can really spend the time on that um, troubleshooting as well, right? Uh, troubleshooting is a is a topic where you can it can be pretty dry. You can you can tell people where to look. You can tell people like where the information lives in the log files and the standard error, standard out stuff like that. But ultimately in 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 the process of learning to use these tools you just need to spend a bunch of time solving things that went wrong and learning uh, kind of the arts of of troubleshooting pipeline runs right um, so we tried um we tried a new kind of exercise during uh, the again workshop where we um we had uh uh participants uh swap la laptops pair up swap laptops and then they they just kind of um they took the, the pipelines that they had written as part of the foundational training. There's like the simple RNA seq pipeline, and then break something on the in their buddy's pipeline, either in the code or configuration or something. Then give the laptop back, and then you have to 
um, troubleshoot, figure out what's what your buddy broke in, in your own home. And that was that was a lot of fun. I think uh, the participants were <laughs> really got into it. Some of them found some really vicious ways <laughs> to make stop, uh, to make things stop or to break things. Um, so that was the, the kind of exercises I think that that can be interesting to explore, to get beyond the, the, the written material. But obviously, it takes a takes a bit more time. Um, uh, yeah, you want to say something? Oh, I, I think there's I think there's such a good exercise. Um, I definitely would have been the the person in the back trying to do the most vicious, subtle little edit uh, to try and mess up my buddy's code. Um, so I think that's exactly the type of exercise that would have resonated with me. Um, and I know we've spoken about this a little bit already, but I think it's really it could be the inspiration for a new set of training as well where we do you know use exercises like this as a part of you know, a workshop for troubleshooting because we get asked about troubleshooting a lot. Um, so having that sort of hands-on experience, um, you know, down in the trenches with people sort of talking about, you know, their problems and um, sort of trying this stuff in a workshop environment um, was, was super valuable and it's, it's given us a really, um, you know, great new sort of directions, I think would be the way to describe it. Um, yeah. Yeah, and and as a team, so um, for, for general uh, info, um, we're, we're we're thinking now about how to get, go kind of beyond uh, what we currently have. Uh, we have a ton of really useful material, but how do you go beyond that? Um, th there's a few objectives we'd like to hit um, uh, by by working on these things this year. One is to make the trainings easier for others to deliver, of course, um, because we we can't travel the world and, and go teach everywhere. But we know there's there's um, already a lot of members of the community who deliver trainings to their own kind of local uh, community. Um, and we want to just make it easier uh, for people to do that. Um, we also want to cater to, to kind of a wider range of learners um, with, with different skills or different um, goals, right? Because you have some people who, who are learning Nextflow uh, because they want to develop their own pipelines, but there are also people who just need to be able to learn how to use somebody else's pipelines. Or in some cases, you know, as a de developer, you might develop a pipeline, but then you want to enable your wet lab colleagues to run them. Um, they don't need to learn Nextflow as such, but they need to learn some basic things like, well, maybe I shouldn't say basic, but um, some key skills like how you run the pipelines and even more importantly, how, how do you deal with, with things not always working uh, from the get-go, speaking of troubleshooting. so. Um, yeah, and different lengths as well, right? Because sometimes some people can can devote uh, a few hours, some people can devote an entire week. It, it really depends a lot on on goals and context. And so we're, we've been looking a lot, and Chris, you've been thinking a lot about kind of how to um, overhaul the, the formulas, not necessarily <laughs> redo everything because we, again, we have a ton of material, but like, how do we get to the next step? fill the gaps that there might be in the current materials, repackage some of that information in a way that's, um, that, that hits the right goals, depending on, on the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I have. And I think it's really exciting that we're in a position now or we're approaching the, the position to, you know, start really developing, implementing some of these, you know, newer workshop structures. Um, and you've already spoken about the different lengths and different learning types and needs. Um, and that's something that is a really big priority for us to address um, because we do understand there's a lot of moving parts when you come to learn a new new language. Um, Nextflow is incredibly powerful and flexible, but it also comes with, with overhead of needing to learn how all of these different things fit together. Um, and as you've already said again, you know, some people have 60 minutes versus six hours. And as we work out you know how to take people through this journey of learning um, all the required skills depending on what their needs are um, you know it's it's i find it really exciting that we're going to be able to sort of bridge into these new workshops and new ideas and, and hopefully really help the community um, you know sort of accelerate their, their pipeline development and, and do good reproducible science yeah it's 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 really ex uh, exciting perspective i think um one of the ways we'll, we'll obviously be uh, developing these um, 
kind of new approaches, new materials is in collaboration with, with people who already de deliver trainings. Um, we're very interested in getting people's insights in um, what's, what's currently working, what's mo more interestingly, <laughs> what's currently not working and what's, what's missing, etc. What can we do better? And so we're very interested in, in working with people who are, who are themselves educators or who are maybe, you know, staff at bioinformatics core facilities, um, anyone in the community really who's uh, already um, um, doing this kind of work so that we can work together to, to serve the community. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of which, um, uh, we do have some trainings coming up in the immediate future, uh, that I should say. Um, we have, uh, we're going to be trying out uh, some, some kind of additional uh, types of trainings uh, in the immediate future. We have a um, two-day training coming up in the context of the upcoming Boston Summit. So for those of you who are not tracking this yet, the next NextFlow Summit is coming up in Boston in May. It's in May, right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't get this wrong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so um, as part of, the, the summit is traditionally uh, prefaced by a hackathon. And so this year in Boston, we're going to experiment with running a training in parallel to the hackathon. Um, so we'll, the registration is not open yet, I don't think, um, but as soon as that opens, we'll, we'll definitely uh, let you know. Um, I expect that's going to be popular. <laughs> yes, um, it is worth highlighting that this will be quite a small um, intimate training. It will only be for 30 people. Um, tickets aren't yet on sale, as Geraldine mentioned, but you can register for updates. Um, so pre-registration is on the summit website. You can jump on there and drop your name and email. Um, so when these tickets do come on sale, if this is something that um, sounds like it's, it's something that you're interested in, um, you'll be notified about it first. So you don't miss out um, on those tickets once they do become available. Um, more immediately though, we do have a community training, the, the <laughs> traditional tried and true <laughs> formula. Um, I know we've been saying about how, you know, we want to uh, add on, develop a lot of new things, but the, the foundational training is, you know, it's there, it's solid and you can, you can learn a ton just by doing that. We do have one coming up in March, don't we? Yeah, we do. So um, the community training will be held on the 5th and 6th of March. Um, there is an event page over on the NF Core website um, under events. And then if you tick on training, um, it's sitting on there on the list. This training, um, there has been some quite big updates to the training material, um, not necessarily the material itself, but um, I spent quite a bit of time just reformatting it, just um, standardizing the language and terminology. Mm. Um, these are kind of some of the changes that I mentioned earlier. Um, that we do try and keep this material up to date and keep it standardized. Um, with this overhaul, um, I remade some of the examples just to make them a little bit clearer. Um, and consequently, uh, we need to re-record these videos to make sure that um, basically what we have in the material is matching what we have in these videos because we do point people at them occasionally. And we get a lot of messages on Slack saying, what, where has this exercise gone? Where is this, you know, why has this been updated? This has not matched the video. Um, so it is, you know, every six months is just a way of us sort of saying, we realize that we changed this and we want to make sure that, um, you know, it is as close to what the material currently is as possible. Um, so yeah, that's happening on the 5th and 6th of March. Um, I'll be taking one session and I think Marcel will be taking the other. Yeah, correct. Um, so we'll split that out across two days and we will have, um, what we're kind of thinking of as office hours or hours that will be hanging out on Slack. Um, so you can come along and watch that at any time and jump you know, put your questions into the Slack. Um, and then if anything doesn't make sense or you want to um, ask more about something, uh, we'll be there to jump on uh, those questions and help you out at the same time. Fantastic. Um, another one that's coming up in March. Man, we're busy in March, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's the NF Core Hackathon coming up in March. I want to make sure everybody's aware, uh, March 18th to 20th. Um, how is that going to go? Yeah, so for anyone um, that hasn't been to the hackathon before, NF Core is, of course, the community of developers that develop pipelines, components um, using Nextflow. Um, traditionally, it was twice a year we would have a hackathon. 
Um, but with the, the two summits that we now hold in Boston and Barcelona, we have in-person events only. This was largely driven by, um, you know, it was quite hard when we had a critical mass in one location and then we had a few people attending online and we just didn't feel the experience was very good for them. Um, so instead of having two hackathons a year, we're now going to have three. Um, so in March, we are going to have a virtual slash hybrid hackathon. What this means is that the hackathon will be um, both online and in person at local sites. So currently we have 19 different local sites. Um, this number is still increasing slowly. Um, but what these local sites are, are um, effectively sort of local community members that say, hey, look, I want to host um, some friends or colleagues or um, collaborators. We're all going to sort of get together um, here and we're going to do some coding together and contribute to NFCore for a couple of days. Um, which is fantastic because coding is better together. It's really nice to sit down with your colleagues and establish those connections, those collaborations. Um, you know, you can help each other troubleshoot and work on these things at the same time. Um, I'm a big fan of coding, um, coding with others in person. Anyway, um, the hackathon is happening um, on the in March. I've forgotten the dates um, at this point. It's the 20 something, 18th, 18th, no, I'm 18th uh, March 18th and 20th. <laughs> 18th, 18th and 20th. Um, lots of things happening in March, so I apologize for getting my dates mixed up. Um, but it'll be a lot of fun. Um, it's free to attend, so you can um, register online. If there's a local site in your area, you can register for that um, and go along and meet some people and um, hopefully have a bit of fun. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, we'll be we'll, we'll be there, we'll be around. Um, and I think uh, if, if anybody listening to this has some really strong opinions or insights about um, teaching Nextflow or similar languages and, and, and want to kind of collaborate with um, and contribute to uh, some of the um, kind of developments that we've mentioned uh, to the training materials. We'd love to hear about it. Uh, and the hackathon might be a good um, opportunity to, um, to, to start getting our hands dirty, mm -hmm. so to speak. All right. Um, any final closing notes on the topic of uh, training? No, I think um, you um, summarized it quite nicely there. Um, I do want to reiterate that um, if you are interested in um, educating others on Nextflow and have ideas, um, you just want to chat about your own experiences, um, we are really um, interested in hearing from you as well. Um, I can't sort of highlight that enough is that, you know, we want to hear what does and doesn't work for you. Um, we know what we think works um, and we know what we do, but in terms of you um, out there in the community actually teaching the stuff as well, um, you know, what are your needs um, and how can we help? Um, you know, that's really important to us. So please reach out, uh, find us on Slack or um, our emails online or LinkedIn or whatever your favorite platform is. Um, yeah, we would be really interested in hearing from you. Absolutely. All right, well, thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, Chris, for joining me today. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening. And we'll uh, see you again on the next episode of the podcast. Thank, thank you so much. Bye,